Hey everybody, Skyler here, and in this video I, I kind of want to vent a little bit and talk about our economy and fiat currencies as a whole and and uh, just kind of give my thoughts. I've, I've, um, you know, I've I, I haven't really made a video like this before, and I haven't just because there's so there's so many aspects of, of there there's so much to talk about, and I am I'm also only talking about a, a small sliver of of what's going on. I'm talking about things as a whole. There's so much more to this than than <laughs> you know that even I can grasp. I just, I've I've been learning about this for years, and I, I still feel like I'm I'm so lost in the dark. And to be honest, I feel like. Uh, the government and you know people who create the economy want that to happen, but at any rate, I'm kind of I just want to vent a little bit and and uh, before I end up going forward though, uh, just know that uh, I, I love having conversations with you guys so much. Um, any question you ever ever have, write it down in the comments below. I don't care if it has nothing to do with this video. I want to be a hundred percent totally available to you guys. Um, and if you have any questions or anything, hey, I, I, I even have a second phone number. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, giving out randomly if people want to message me, you know, direct message me or something. And, and hey, I'm fine to chat for a little bit and just discuss this kind of stuff. A lot of people don't know about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, I, um, you know, assets or anything like that. And, I, and I, I love talking about that sort of stuff. So if you have any questions whatsoever, write them down below. I would love to, to help you further understand this industry. Uh, that being said, also, my, my channel, 100% of everything I ever make goes straight to charity. I'm never going to take a single penny under this name. Um, so every single like, subscribe, comment down below, like definitely goes a very, very long ways. Um, and I'm finally, I'm, I feel like I'm getting to the point, I've, I've actually made some, um, some money from this channel, as little as I am. Um, and I get real, I'm like really excited now that I could actually help people. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, let me, um, let, let's kind of start with... Uh, let's start with, uh, what should I start with? Let's start with this chart right here. So um, this chart starts, so let's talk about fiat currency, right? Let's talk about how we went off the gold standard and what that kind of has done. So first of all, um, this chart starts in about 1913, and I, it's probably this chart is representing what has, what's happened to our economy since the Fed took over. So by the way, if people who don't know, um, the Fed was an organization that got passed uh, like at the late hours right before Christmas. Not New Year's Eve, I think it was like the 24th. Oh yeah, wait, 23rd, 24th? Maybe it was New Year's Eve, or uh, Christmas Eve, I mean. Um, but at any rate, um, the bill was passed to have our entire economy not nationalized, but privatized in 1913. And so much so that literally we cannot audit our economy. Can you... Just think about that for a second. They are telling us that they have enough, oh, we have gold and don't worry, like we're in control, we know what we're doing, um, but they won't let us audit it. No one is allowed to. They are above the government, literally the president of the United States. Um, in fact, uh, was it Jimmy Carter? I believe Jimmy Carter tried to audit the, the Fed and I believe that actually hurt him so bad and it, and it, and it cost him you know, uh, so much good he could have done just because, you know, that's the people who have the power. And um, but at any rate, uh, this chart starts when they took over. And uh, I'm not going to talk about. There's a lot of stuff that happened when the you know when the economy crashed. But I mean, let's fast forward to 1971. 1971. That's when we went off the gold standard. So let me take a step back before I, I explain this further. Uh, the United States has been backed by gold and silver ever since our economy was created. So. Um, now, in 1776, there's been a lot since since from 1776 to 1913. There has been quite a few fake, not fake, sorry, uh, fiat currencies that were created. <laughs> I'll call them fake. Why not? Uh, fiat currencies that were created, and some of them lasted like four years before it, they hyperinflated, and then they had to go back to the gold or silver standard. Um, and and actually, way before uh, you know the the Fed took over. Our economy was actually uh, very much based on um, the Mexican, there's a silver dollar that they had and, and that's what we were backed by. But at any rate, um, I'm not gonna talk about that. Let's just fast forward, 2013, Fed took over. Uh, and then 1971, that is when uh, Richard Nixon, he passed a bill um, saying that we are going off the gold standard. Now, there's a lot of people that say, why we went off the gold standard? But uh, essentially what I think is happened, what I believe happened is, uh, you know, we had a couple wars that went down, and uh, what happens? What happens when 
Okay, first of all, right, the Fed owns our, 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 our currency, uh, our economy, and um, they cannot be audited. So they were like, so technically the Fed it can print as much money as they want and say, oh, yeah, we, we definitely have it back. Don't worry about it. Um, and we can't audit them and see if they actually have it backed. So that's what happened, right? And when wars happen and you do not have the money to back it up, then obviously we're going to say, okay, we lost the war. War canceled. Sorry, guys. We're going to return home. You win. You re no, that's not going to happen, right? Um, you're going to print more money and uh, devalueize the do dollar just so we can make sure that we win that war or whatever, right? So, um, you know, and, and I'm not saying that's bad. I mean, yeah, it is, but <laughs> that's not what I'm complaining about. But eventually, around in the late 60s, um, other worlds, in fact, there is a clip from the uh, French prime minister uh, talking about our economy um, crashing. Dang, I should pull that up, but um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you end up doing that. But he essentially was just talking about how dangerous it was that... Um, you know, um, the, the state of things with our economy, and whatnot, with, you know, the fact that we may not even have like our gold backings. And, and uh, in, at any rate, the world started saying, okay, so the world would end up, um, would end up buying United States dollar. And then all of a sudden they realized, oh, that might be not be backed by gold. So they started selling the United States dollar back to the United States and taking gold. It happened so much that in 1971, the, the reserves dropped by like, and I, I could be wrong in these numbers, but dropped by, you know, 50 to 75%. It, it was quite a significant drop. Um, and again, they're not audited, so we're not 100% about these numbers either. But so much so where um, eventually um, we went off the gold standard. That was 1971. So as of 1971, our economy isn't backed by anything. Um, you know, there's this famous, uh, there's this, uh, this, uh, economist who always shares, shows a picture of, of a, you know, gold and then a monopoly money and then a United States dollar. And they say, which one's not like the other, um, you know, and, and the, uh, the, uh, peop, you know, kids actually get it mostly right. Right. The dollar and the, uh, the monopoly money is just paper, right. It's just, you know, fake stuff, whatever. Um, at any rate, um, uh yeah uh so at any rate um i'm getting off topic here so we went off the united states we went off of the gold currency 1971 so from 1776 until 1971 almost 200 years we went about 400 billion dollars in debt it was like 398 but let's just say 400 right 400 billion dollars in debt uh, we are currently around the 24, 20, 23, 24 trillion dollar debt mark right now. So 200 years, $400 billion in debt. 50 years, not even 50 years, right? Um, now we're, you know, we went from $400 billion to $24 trillion. And I'm recording this at the end of 2019. Uh, in a couple of days, the Fed is going to insert another half a trillion dollars. In one day, they are going to inflate the economy more than it took the first 200 years of the country, right? And so what does what does this mean? Now, this chart only goes to 2010. Um, I, I, for some reason, I can't find one that goes. I, I've seen them, but for some reason, I'm, I'm not typing the right keywords or something. I need to do some more digging, and I probably should before I made this video, but whatever. Um, oh, but, uh, let me show you this. So essentially what this means, right? Uh, 1913, the Federal Reserve was created, and now um, the dollar, if you had $1 in 1913, it's now worth five cents. Right, our economy, the the dollar worth has dropped uh, around 96, 97 percent or more uh, of its value, and it's actually probably closer to 97, 98 now after just this one year. So the United States dollar is just decreasing in value drastically, right? And um, and I mean, you you have to at least make 1.7% interest on your money every single year just to have the money be the same. So just know if you have a job and you're working out, you're working, you know, if you know you you have a nine to five job or a salary job or whatever the case, um, you have to get a raise of 1.7% every year just to have just to be making the same money. If you don't, then every year your salary is actually less and less because uh, your dollar 
purchasing power has has dropped drastically, right? And um, oh, let me go to this tweet. I'm, I'm just going all over the place. Sorry, um, but. So, 1776, 400 billion debt. Um, these are just tweets I've made, but <laughs> um, at any rate, so you, know, you can you know verify all this with Google. Uh, I may be a little bit off on a couple of these numbers. I'm pretty sure I'm not though. I'm pretty, um, but at, at any rate, 1972, 2019, 24 trillion in debt. Now, the fiat out of the thousands of fiat. Now, what fiat is, by the way, is fiat is money that's not backed by an actual physical asset. Um, so like the Fed, um, it's not backed by anything. And if you don't believe me, just trust me, it's it's accurate, I'm right. Um, the United States dollar is legit not backed by a single thing. Um, I guess if you want to be technical, it's backed by the United States Army, right? It's backed by the faith that the dollar yesterday will be worth the same today. But it's not actually backed by anything. Now why is that so bad? Um, you know, my wife actually talks to me about, she read this like, I don't even know, like seven to nine, 900 page book. It's like a huge book. And it, it, they just talked about, and, and I, I should probably, you know, pull up that book and show you what it is. But at any rate, it talks about how, um, the world is so much better today than it ever was. Every day we go forward, the world is much, much better. And I, I completely agree with that. And I think, yeah, the, the dollar today goes a lot more than it did back then. And I always kind of complain about, for example, housing, the, uh, our, our housing market. Um, you know, when, when, when your parents are complaining about like, oh, you need to get your own house and whatever, you know, well, okay, back in 1950, the average house was about, a, was barely more than what your entire yearly income was. And now people, you know, I know people that make like 70 to hundred thousand dollars that are buying half a million dollar houses. That's crazy. But you were able to pay for college even in, in a, in a summer job, right? Um, you know, my school, it was $16,000 a semester. Like my summer job pays you that, right? Um, so, uh, so now also back then, right? The average square foot of the house, which is about a thousand square feet. Now it's about 1500. We also have nicer homes and, you know, all these appliances and stuff that makes our, our living much more comfortable and yada, yada, yada. I, I, you know, so I, I it's hard to like talk about this sort of stuff because there's so many factors that come into play. But at any rate, um, there was a guy, and I, I can't remember the, I can't remember his name. I, I should, you know, I should probably Google this stuff and get all this information down pat, you know, and and memorize before I do these videos. But um, you can Google this, I'm sure. But there there's a guy that ended up um, for for some uh, firm or university or something like that. Uh, he ended up. He wanted to find out what happened to all of the currencies out there. He wanted to find out um, all the currencies that ever existed, how long did they exist, how did they fail, all this sort of stuff. And uh, he got to like the B's or C's or halfway in between the B's or something like that. And there is just so many currencies out there and every single one followed the exact same path of failure. Like this is insane when you can you can predict where the economy is going because out of the thousands of currencies that's existed since mankind was a lot was was using currencies of any kind if a fiat currency has existed it has followed the same path to ultimate failure there is a 100 percent fail rate in all fiat currencies that have ever existed now, obviously, there's fiat currencies that are alive right now, but they are following that same path of failure. Every single one. The average lifespan of a fiat currency, like the United States dollar, like the you know, like most currencies out there, right, is uh, is 35 years. The longest currency to ever exist has been 317 years, and I believe that's the uh, uh, British pound. Uh, Longest currency to ever exist. Oh wait, no, longest fiat, fiat currency. Oh yeah, the British pound, the sterling British pound. Okay, there we go. So the sterling, the British pound sterling is the longest uh, fiat that's ever existed and, and it's lasted for 317 years. Um, and it's still kicking around today. So obviously that has gone a lot more than the 35 years, right? But, um, where am I? <laughs> but, 
But um, but it still is following that same path of failure. The average lifespan of any currency is 35 years, right? The United States fiat currency has lasted 50 years since 1971. And this is impor important because, um, in fact, my, my tweet I wrote below that, the, the scary thing about this is it's okay. I mean, it's fine that a currency fails, all right? Well, let's look at Turkey right now. Let's look at Venezuela right now. Let's look at Greece right now, right? Uh, their currencies go through hyperinflation. And if you look at, uh, if you look at like Venezuela, let's talk at... Uh, Ven, Ven, Venezuela, <laughs> however you spell that, Venezuela, um, hyperinflation, hyperinflation meme, that's funny, um, there we go, so uh, what used to cost a couple of bucks, um, now, like, if you wanted to buy a roll of toilet paper, this is how much cash you would need, right, and here's a bunch of pictures of, of random stuff, but you would have to bring a wheelbarrow of cash, what used to cost where you would just have to spend, you know, a couple bucks for for coffee, it would be, it ended up hyperinflating over a million percent. So this is an extreme example of hyperinflation. But every single currency is doing this exact thing. It's just going, it's just going a little bit slower, right? So the United States for sure is doing a hyperinflation, right? It took 200 years for us to get 400 billion dollars, and it's taken less than 50 years to get to 24 trillion. And, and they're printing just this year alone. They've printed like, a, oh, geez, I don't even know, a trillion, a trillion and a half. Um, they just recently, they have inserted more money in the economy this year than the 2008 crash. Yet a lot of people have no idea it's even happening, right? Um, but here's the scary thing, guys. The United States dollar is, is, is a currency that's backed by tons of currencies out in the world. Um, so when the entire world, for the most part, is backed by United States dollar and the United States dollar is a fiat currency, when the United States dollar fails, it will be on a global scale, which has never happened in the history of mankind. Now, this may not even happen in our lifetime. It may happen in the next 10 years, 20, 50, I don't know. Uh, I need to, I need to insert myself drastically into this this world and learn like crazy and I don't know how long it's going to take I, I I love learning about the way money works and this this literally is my hobby I would rather learn about this stuff than go hang out with a lot of my friends I'm super nerdy but um but when the United and, and oil is actually based off of just United States dollar and I, I believe the first barrel was is now and uh, it's backed by you know some the Chinese currency um, but, uh, but when it's just scary to know that, um, in fact, let's, uh, let's go, let's go right here. So, um, let's look at China, right? China follows that same path of hyperinflation. Let's look at Singapore, same path, Indi India, same path, United States dollar, boom, right? They call it quantitative easing. <laughs> That's what they call it. It's so like, uh, when 2008 crash happened, they inserted a lot of money into the economy, and then they inserted, you know, quantitative using three and, you know, four, five, six. I, I don't know what number we're at right now, but uh, but they call it quantitative easing, where they just insert money into the economy. Now, here's also what's crazy as well. Um, the United States. Um, oh, my gosh. OK, so the, the Fed. Um, OK, so the Fed was created by... Now, who knows, right? No one actually knows. But the large banks, right? The the the, the Wells Fargo, the Chase Bank, the you know, the large banks back in the day, back in 1913, um, or uh, you know, early 1900s when the 19 what was it like 13, 19, I don't know. Uh, there was a crash that happened right before 1913, 19. I can't remember. Um, but that's when um, a bunch of banks got together and they decided they wanted to privatize the economy. And, and, and so essentially the economy is actually run by the same people who, who <laughs> the same people who caused the crash in 2008, these banks that were making all these shady loans. And then what happened to those banks when, when, uh, when they should have gone bankrupt, right? The Fed bailed them out. So essentially the Fed 
are the same people on the board of directors that own all the major banks, right? Wells Fargo, City, City. I, I, maybe I shouldn't say this stuff and say these names, but the largest banks out there are also board members of the Fed. You can't see who's the, on the board members of the Fed, but give me a break. Like like J.P. Morgan would would uh, get a meeting to start the Fed, and he's like, I'm out. So they actually have a board of directors, and they make money. So these private the Fed is owned privately. They they loan money to the United States with interest, and the United States pays them back. But those same people on those boards also own the largest banks in the United States. So when these when these cra- when that crash happened back in two thousand eight, they they the banks made tons of money doing irresponsible loans, which. The United States people, their citizens paid for um, with that crash. Everyone lost their homes, lost everything. I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people ended up losing tons and tons of money, which the banks made. And um, with all of that loss of property and everything, the Fed bailed themselves out, essentially, which made them more money. And now we're going through the same thing again. And... I think I'm making this video because I just feel like I'm going crazy. I do not understand this world. I don't understand how everyone just seems okay with all of this. And and it just blows my mind. But um But you know, in fact, let me let me just share with you the <laughs> this is so this is a um a video that's that is talking about the Fed needing to be audited. And, and the Fed's just sitting there saying they're super transparent, but they won't let anyone audit them. Give me a break. You're not transparent if you can't be audited. Don't, but anyways, here me to share the video. Oh wait, do I have the sound on? Yeah. Give me an example that would justify the lack of transparency. Well, we don't have a lack of transparency. Um, well, you, I you appear, do if you can't audit it. That's a lack of transparency. So I regard the Federal Reserve as one of the most transparent central banks in the world. <laughs> we that's explain. a statement. What, what, what do you fear? Oh, dear. oh, yeah. I actually saw this video because of buy Bitcoin. That's a, famous, uh, that's a famous thing right there. But it's funny because he's actually saying this when the Fed is talking about them being super transparent. But you won't let us audit you. Okay, you're not transparent. Here, let me show you one more video. Um, uh, oh, by the way, this is uh, um, uh, she. Uh, this oh man, what's her name? I can't remember her her first name. It's not Han though. I don't. Maybe it is. I don't think it is. But anyways, uh, she sits on the board of directors of the Fed at the time. I'm not sure if she still is or not. But um, let me show you one more video. Okay, so <laughs> so this is the Secretary of Treasury, right? Uh, talking trash on Bitcoin um, and, and essentially just saying that uh, cash is is not used for any nefarious activities, right? Everyone that uses cash is always just uses it for good purposes. And anyways, let's hear this. He's very, very strong. Well, we, so we, whether it's a physical money service provider or an electronic, they're going to have the same regulations. We, we'd have a problem if, if we decided every time that cash itself or, or any other form of of currency every time it's used for some nefarious activities if we weren't going to use it anymore. I, I'm not sure that, that maybe it's a little easier at this point in the technology for, for certain illicit activities, but that 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 can't be the reason, um, you know, to, to say you're not going to use something. We wouldn't even use cash then because cash is, is laundered all the time and used for nefarious. Act- That's all we've ever used for nefarious activities, and we certainly had plenty of them. I don't think that's I don't think that's accurate at all. The cash is laundered all the time. We have the strongest AML system in the world. You know, we just came back from FATF where on a global basis they've agreed to implement money laundering. I think, as you know, we use sanctions tools. So we combat bad actors in the U.S. dollar every day to protect the U.S. financial system. And what we're saying is there's been a lot of nefarious activities historically, and it's never involved Bitcoin. So obviously it's been it's been, uh, you know, pretty successfully done with cash. That's all I'm saying. Uh, uh, Unless you think there has been. I don't think it's been successfully done with cash. I'll push back on that. And we're going to make sure that Bitcoin doesn't become the equivalent of Swiss numbered bank accounts, which were obviously a a real risk to the financial system. And we're going to... Anyways, so, jeez, I mean, can you imagine, you, you, like, everybody knows, this guy's full of crap.
crap. Yet he's okay to talk about this stuff on television. Like, this blows my mind. Um, when I think of this video, I, I, I just, like, I just... I, I, <laughs> I see me on a loop, on a GIF, punching myself in the face over and over and over and over, right? It's just like, oh my gosh, like, is this really happening? <laughs> but this type of talk happens all the time. Um, and people just lie straight up. And so, like, okay, when you're able to go on, like, CNBC and just straight up lie, really? Cash has not been used for any nefarious activities. It's not laundered. It's it's completely safe. Give me a break. Cash is, like, one of the easiest things to launder, right? Um, right? I, I could have a million dollars in cash right now, and I could take it wherever I want. The only way that you would find out I bought anything from it or gave it to anybody is if you saw me do that, right? Uh, anyways, um, so, yeah. Um, now, <laughs> yeah, Voltaire, paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value of zero. Now, um, I, I'm not against gold. A lot of people think I am just because I like Bitcoin. I'm not against gold. Um, I, I do think gold is a way, way, way better um, store of value than, than fiat currency, right? Um, but I am pro Bitcoin, so let's just talk about Bitcoin really quick. Hey, so actually, um, I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, I'm gonna end the video right here. I realized it was 26 minutes. I, I, I finished this video, and it's only 26 minutes right now. But I literally, ha I spoke for an hour and a half, everybody. And I realized there's like three sections I spoke about, and this kind of ends the first section. I'm not gonna kill you and do any more. If you want to know more, I, I'm totally down to ramble and talk, and I can make more videos of, of this. But uh, I feel like if I'd made it an hour and a half video, no one would watch it, and, um, <laughs> and it would just be awful, and everyone would hate me for it or whatever. So I'm gonna end the video right here, um, and I just want people to under uh, just know again, um, if you do have any questions whatsoever about this uh, cryptocurrency space, about the economy, about anything. I love, love discussing this with people. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before already on this video, but I don't know a single person in real life that, that actually loves talking about this sort of stuff. Um, people like to have little conversations, but they just like want to know some stuff and or just, you know, have a little five minute, 10 minute conversation and then they don't care about it anymore. Like I'm obsessed with the economy, with how money works. I'm, I'm obsessed with how the world works because it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever what's going on. Um, I feel like most of the world is crazy how it's operated and everyone's just like okay with it. <laughs> And um, so, hey, if you have any questions at all about, you know, crypto or about anything, uh, pop them down below. I love talking to you. And and I'm, I have them on my profile right now on Twitter. I, I'm very, very active on Twitter, right? I, I joined in January 2018. It's, it's, it's at the end of 2019. So it's been almost two years and I have almost 10,000 tweets. That's like 5,000 tweets a you know, a, a, a year, what's that, like 13 or so, you know, tweets a day. I, I don't know what the math is on that. But uh, at any rate, um, uh, message me on, on Twitter, DM me, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very um, available on, on Twitter. And then also just know that uh, yeah, every single like and subscribe absolutely goes so far because this channel goes straight to charity. I'm never going to take a single penny to this channel. I've always wanted to start a nonprofit and help others, and I think this is this is my first step in, into doing that and in going to that direction. So, you know, you know, share, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff absolutely goes a very, very long ways. And I super appreciate everyone who's followed me. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers and that just like is mind blowing to me. I never thought I'd even get a hundred subscribers, let alone a thousand, you know? So, um, thank you so much, everybody who's been on my side, been helping me, you know, having my channel grow and everything. It, it means so much. You guys have no idea. I, I guess I don't know any people that like get real emotional on YouTube or anything. They kind of have that wall, um, but it does. It makes me really emotional that uh, people like talking about this sort of stuff and they want to push forward and like help change the world and they want to, you know, make things better. And, and that just is like, wow, you know, like that, that is awesome. And so thank you guys so much. You, you really have no idea how much, how much it, I, I appreciate um, every single comment and, and everything. And, um, 
And so, yeah, so I'm going to end the video right now. Thanks again. Oh, and uh, by the way, um, go to freeross.org forward slash petition. Sign the petition. Um, uh, Ross was somebody who created the first open world market. Um, they put him on, and then on trial. They, they tried to say that he murdered and did all this crazy stuff, but they didn't actually charge him with that stuff. They just said it. So it's just a huge mess. Um, but he didn't. It's first time offender, and this guy's in jail. Um and and there's the only way he can get out is if he gets uh, if if the president gives him a um, uh, what do you call it a oh my gosh um, I, I I can't remember the name for it but um, if the if the president essentially says that uh, um, you know he'll let him go but here here's the petition please sign it um, this is crazy that he's in prison and that he he got charged with this crime but. Um, at any rate, I'm going to end the video there. Thank you so much, everybody. And, uh, yeah, I will see you at the next video. Take care. Bye.